let's build some prediction intervals. Prediction intervals are very useful because often there's a lot of uncertainty with the point predictions that come out of machine learning models. Having a range or a prediction interval is much more useful for downstream users. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this with conformal prediction today. Conformal prediction is a methodology that's model agnostic. So I'm gonna do it on a simple random forest model, but everything I do here, you can apply to your own particular models and get prediction intervals. I'm walking through a toy problem here to just give you the intuition. So this way you're like, hey, I get a sense of how it works. But if you're actually applying it, there's much more sophisticated techniques that can do more complex ways of building intervals. And so you'll wanna check out the additional resources to do that. Now, as with all of these, I'm gonna run this notebook live just as you would, and we'll just go through it step by step along the way. All right, let's go ahead and load our dependencies in. Now, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna get a model to start with. I'm gonna use the California Housing Project. It's a very well-known data set. And we're gonna take that data set, split it into three partitions. We're gonna have a training that we train the model with. We have a calibration. This is gonna be used to help decide how wide of a prediction intervals are gonna be. And then we're gonna have a test where we'll actually test this out, run this, and see how well our prediction intervals do. So the first step is let's go ahead and train the model. Now that we have a trained model, we're gonna run predictions on this calibration data set. Now, the predictions, of course, like all predictions, are gonna have some error. What I'm using here is a great plot from Yellow Brick, great visualization tool, but it just shows me the difference between my actuals, Y, versus my predicted, the Y with the little hat. And if I go ahead and I can see if I take a point like this over here, you can see, for example, this point was predicted to be at about two and a half, but the actual value was at four. So there's an error here between that two, two and a half or whatever and four. What we can do now is let's take a look and figure out how much error as a whole is my model's making. Because that's going to help me understand how wide of a prediction interval I need to be able to actually capture it. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate out my model error. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to plot this out so you can get a sense of that distribution of error where you'll see that right, there's lots of times in this model where we have just a little bit of error, right, under kind of 0.25-ish, but there's a few cases out here where we have a large amount of area. And this is really relevant to when we're thinking about prediction intervals, because prediction intervals are gonna probably catch most of that behavior, but depending on how wide we set the interval, it's gonna miss some. So this calibration data set we can use to figure out how to calibrate that prediction interval. Now, I'm arbitrarily, I selected 0.95. This is gonna be a pretty wide prediction interval that captures a lot of the pieces. You could change this, you could have a narrower or wider depending on your use case as well. So now that I've gotten this prediction interval, we can see here the line for the error for at that 95% is one point, I'm gonna call it two, three, and let's visualize this on the histogram. So that same histogram I had earlier, now I've driven a line. And this, what this is saying in this case is that 95% of the stuff is to the left, 5% uh, of that stuff is over on the right side. And this is the intuition we want for our intervals, right? We want our intervals to be, in this case, right about 95% of the time. And this is a great time to point out, I'm not a statistician. A lot of this stuff is written by statisticians. I might be a little bit off with some of the terminology. And if you're a statistician, please forgive me. Okay, let's keep going. So now that we know what our width should be for the air, that we know anything above this kind of 0.13 is gonna be in that little bit of range, let's go ahead and make a prediction. We're gonna make the predictions on the test data. And now we're gonna compute our intervals. And we're gonna compute them by just taking our prediction, adding that 1.3 in this case to one side, adding it to the other side, 
and I even put this inside a nice little data frame here so you can take a look at this. And if you take a look at any of these where you'll see the predictions, you'll see to, we'll add an upper interval, of which is about 1.3 bigger, and a lower interval that's, that subtracts 1.3 from the predicted. And so what that's doing is instead of just focusing on this point prediction of 0.78, we're telling our end users like, hey, this is where we expect it. It's a little bit wider, but now what you can do is you can better understand and expect that it's gonna be in this. This is not the same thing as a confidence interval. Confidence intervals are a very different statistical concept. I'm not gonna to try to explain it off the top of my head. This is a prediction interval, which gives you where the prediction is likely to be between. Let's take a look and we'll just visualize this. I just sampled down to just a few data points here. I'm gonna go ahead and plot these out. And what we're gonna see here is you can see the prediction interval for a couple of these data points that we have here. I can then put the actual value in between here. Now I cherry picked this. And so that's why you'll see for most of these, the actual value is between the intervals as we wanted. But I did pick one example here over on the far right, where you see this is that one of those rare cases in that 5 percentage area, where this time it actually was outside the prediction interval. And that can happen. Prediction intervals are just a bit more of a guidance than a point prediction for those end users. And I can tell you, I've had users that know that there's a lot of uncertainty in the model and they much prefer having an interval. So I hope this has given you the understanding of what a prediction interval is. Look at the resources. If you want to go farther in this, there's lots of great packages that will go ahead and do all of this for you in one step. But I think it's important to have the intuition. Thanks.